Ricky Dicky Doodah Grimes is officially back, which means it's time for comicbook.com to break down the ones who live and share everything you might have missed in the show's premiere episode. BD here, and in this video, we're gonna run through all the Easter eggs in the first episode of The Walking Dead, the ones who live with exclusive insights from the cast, and give it an official review score out of 10 at the end. So be sure to subscribe because we're gonna be doing this for all six episodes of the latest TWD spinoff series, and let's jump in. The show opens on Rick Grimes looking at a bunch of turbines in Philadelphia, immediately showing us what a formidable environment Rick has landed himself in, but also reminding us of the propellers of the very helicopters that took Rick Grimes away from The Walking Dead back in season nine. In his room, a news report on the television shows The Fall of Omaha, one of the Civic Republic's communities shown in the World Beyond spinoff series a few years ago. Omaha fell to an inside job, ultimately getting hit with chlorine bombs and having a herd of zombies sent its way with news of the disaster now being shown to the Philadelphia community. And Philadelphia is the one community whose location was kept a secret from the other two communities in Omaha and Portland. Before the show even starts, the opening credits are loaded with Easter eggs. A map shows the three communities of Portland, Omaha, and Philadelphia, but also features a nuclear explosion marker calling out to the events of Fear the Walking Dead's later seasons, which saw a massive bomb go off in Texas. Given the importance of these four marked locations, the X's on the map that come a little bit later Later, are likely of some significance as well, possibly locations which the CRM had destroyed, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. We see the message in a bottle that Rick Grimes sent to Michonne in the credit scene from the Walking Dead series finale. Doctors gassing someone, possibly showing us how they saved Rick's life after he was impaled. The phone which Michonne found before leaving the Walking Dead and taking her mission of finding Rick. A singular representation of a person in command at the CRM, the likely place we will see Rick set his sights on. A Civic Republic newspaper with headlines relaying that residents are hoping to get the freedom to leave the locations. And if you listen closely to the song at the end of the credits, you will hear the same musical tune that plays at the end of the Walking Dead main series musical intro. The show comes in hot with Rick on a walker slaying mission, giving Andrew Lincoln and all of us fans what we have had as a long running wish of Rick Grimes losing his hand just like Rick Grimes did in issue number 28 of the Walking Dead comics. This is something the Walking Dead itself refused to do, often citing budgetary restrictions and difficulties in having Rick do some tasks believably, but they finally did it in this six episode series years later. Here we are. Now all of that said, Aaron did lose a hand on The Walking Dead, and he grew a beard that made him look a lot like Rick Grimes from the comics, but it seems Rick is going to be the one true Rick after all. While Rick sits in himself all bloodied up in his room later, we can notice his beard is really growing in, and that could be reflective of his mental state as the original Walking Dead show saw Rick get his most primal and unhinged when the beard was growing on him, so that's something to think about. Okafor, a new character that's a high-ranking member of the CRM, brings Rick and fellow new character Thorn to what's left of Lincoln Financial Stadium where the Eagles once played. The stadium was bombed by the CRM when the world started to fall, a reveal which also explains how Atlanta was hit with napalm, something we saw in a flashback in the early seasons of The Walking Dead, and how Los Angeles was left up in flames in the first season of Fear the Walking Dead. It's all connected. The answers keep on coming for Walking Dead fans because Okafor keeps talking, explaining what A's and B's are. And this was a mystery that started with Jadis many years ago on The Walking Dead. A's are leaders and strong people who other people will follow, which the CRM will not accept. B's are everyday people just trying to survive who will follow other people and they're allowed to join. This is why Anne, AKA Jadis, lied about Rick being an A, saying he's a B at the last minute when she found him at the river in his final episode of The Walking Dead back in season nine. Long story short, Okafor wants Rick and Thorne to help change the CRM and his long story is cut short because he gets a rocket lodged in his chest and boom goes the Okafor. That was some crazy aim. Well, let, let's talk about that though because <laughs> if they could have just been like one foot off from a million feet away, I'll tell you. <laughs> Terry O'Quinn plays General Beale, bringing the Walking Dead CCO Scott Gimple's love of Lost full circle as the John Locke actor is now playing a major part in the zombie apocalypse. Beale questions Rick on a bench overlooking Philly, calling him Grimes every time Rick is telling the truth, but calling him Rick when Rick is telling a lie, possibly being a tell on Beale's ability to sniff out fibs. Later on, we see Rick on a helicopter with Okafor, this is before Okafor went boom, of course. 
Rick tells a story about growing up on a farm, giving us a lot of information about his childhood, which we just never got on the main show, like the house burning down and his father getting burnt, though his father is the one who set the fire himself, metaphorically coming into play now to say that sometimes you have to burn what you know down in order to rebuild it as something better, as his father's fire ultimately saved the family farm. There's no mention of Rick's brother Jeff from the comics in this story, who was introduced much later in the comics, having been in Barcelona for the apocalypse and never getting a chance to reunite with his fellow Grimes brother. Ultimately, Rick's chopper goes down and it was Michonne who brought it down, likely having some sort of beef with the CRM given how quickly she slaughtered the soldiers in the background and nearly killed Rick too? Boom! Cliffhanger! And here is what Andrew Lincoln and Denai Guerrero had to say about Rick and Michonne's shocking reunion. We said, well, how, what is the most insane reunion? Can we, can we, can we imagine? What about this? What about that? And we just thought, well, this, we landed on this. Now let's review this episode on a scale of one to Negan. I'm giving this episode a holy sh Overall, this was a phenomenal step back into the Walking Dead world and the Rick Grimes of it all. It welcomes new viewers, but also rewards those of us who have stuck around for the entirety of the Walking Dead and all of its spinoffs too. Rick Grimes is well written, making every effort we believe he'd make to escape a place like the CRM and try to get back to his family, ultimately living up to his identity as an A and hoping to spark a change. The answers in the episode are plentiful and the exposition could have easily been way too much, but it fills us in on everything that's been happening in Philadelphia since Rick left Alexandria and since the world fell apart, all while leading to a reunion between Rick and Michonne in this show's very first episode. Great acting, we're going to miss Craig Tate's Okafor since he was a one and done, and the cliffhanger ending and the nature of Rick and Michonne's reunion was a really pleasant, shocking moment. I'm giving episode one of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live a nine out of 10. What did you think of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live episode one? Share your thoughts in the comment section and subscribe to comicbook.com on YouTube for more updates, interviews, breakdowns, and reviews like this one over the next six weeks. I'm BD, I'll see you there.